Hello, so this is where it all starts. This is called um, L'Oreal's Revital Lift Miracle Blur Skin Smoother. This is a really good basic uh, moisturizer to put on underneath your makeup. Just like a white cream and it um, absorbs in really quickly. So that's um, a really good moisturizer after you've gotten out of the shower. You know, wait a few minutes and then you've got like Olay eye serum or if you have an eye serum just put a little bit on underneath your eyes and right on the edges just in here in that tear duct area and just around and let that sink in you're going to want to uh, moisturize your lips this is a Sally Hansen um, lip moisturizer you definitely want to put all of these primers and moisturizers on before you put your lipstick on. Now with lip moisturizers, you want to go around the line. You want to go outside of the line. Because you really want to moisturize those tiny little lines that go towards your lips. Now for an eye primer, um, I do like Wet n Wild. It's a Fergie uh, Face of the Day eye primer. It's really good. It doesn't have any color. It doesn't have any shimmer. It absorbs really nicely and it holds the color really well all day long. So I would put that on for my eye primer. Um, I have not found a replacement for Porefessional, which is from Benefit. This is a pore minimizer. It's a little bit different than a primer. This is a, you tap it in, tap it, into areas where your pores are quite prominent and large and with me there's you know some problems areas right around the chin area right on the nose area so you're tapping it in and it's actually filling in and making those pores disappear I use that for a pore filler I think that's a great idea for a pore filler for the face um, if you haven't used the Rimmel's if you want to spend a little more money this is Selma Hayek's Nuance, and this is runs around um, maybe $12. This is a very silicone-y, gel-like um, primer. It makes your skin feel very, very silky. It's a beautiful um, primer. I love it, and it is the one that I am choosing to wear today. Okay, now that you've had your face primed, your eyes primed, also, take it down your neck a little bit. So you're going to want to use a finishing spray. You're going to use it two times. First, you're going to use it to, on top of your primer, just before your foundation goes, you're going to know, just three little sprays. It's like hairspray for your face. So now we've got the primer, we've got this face spray on, we're ready to put our foundation on. You have a few options for foundation. If you are on a budget, um, e.l.f. has a really nice foundation, surprisingly. Uh, especially if you have dry skin or older skin. It doesn't sink into the wrinkles and it lasts all day. It doesn't oxidize and turn colors. I really like it and it's only $6. So if you're on a really big, tight budget, Flawless Face Foundation is good. I'm just... Your second option, live in the UK, is Healthy Mix. Um, foundation. This is put out by Bushwall and it's not very common in the US but it's very popular in the UK. It's a creamier, uh, more liquid formula. It's very very good for dry skin. If you have dry patches, if you tend to see flakies when you put your makeup on, this is perfect for it. So that's if you're in the UK or if in the US you can get this on a website um, it can tend to be expensive. I bribe my friends in England to send me bottles, so I actually have two bottles of this. Now Kate Middleton, I was told, wore Bobbi Brown's moisturizing foundation on her wedding day, so that's what I'm going to wear on this one, pretending this is our wedding day, of course. So, now there's a couple ways to put this on. 
You can actually um, dot it all over your face. Maybe put a little extra on the problem areas. Now if you notice, I did not put concealer on. I have some very obvious spots on my face, but what I do, because when you're older, you don't want a huge buildup of product. You want to just sort of um, add smaller layers. Now I'm using a stipple brush and it's got little light fibers on the top and it's got denser fibers in the bottom. I'm pouncing it on my skin and by pouncing it I'm giving my skin an airbrushed look. It's mixing that makeup on in a very um, interesting way. It's very similar to airbrushing. Now when I had my wedding a makeup artist came and airbrushed myself and two of my bridesmaids. Allot yourself some time to put your makeup on because you don't want to be rushing, especially for this. And if you're rushing you may spill things. So I also highly recommend you have a tea towel or a sheet or something on over you. Um, most of the time when you're having your makeup done you're in your undergarment so you have a bathrobe on or something like that. So. Now this foundation, this Bobbi Brown's Moisturizing Foundation, um, this goes on so nicely and leaves a beautiful finish. I would recommend it for anyone. If you are going to have a gown that's going to show some décolleté, you're going to want to take this down your neck. Now today is not a day to wear SPF or HD anything. You can either do it with your fingers up your neck or you can do the same process. And you can swipe it a little bit more. Um, it really does do a good job um, covering. You do want a uniform look so you want to get behind your ears. And if your ears are totally a different color, actually do your ears. So. Now the best thing you can do for yourself after you have done this step is to look in a very magnified mirror and have a look to see where you can touch up. Now I'm going to take the mirror and uh, I'm just going to look and now it takes um, a minute or two for this to set into your skin, absorb into your skin and if you have a lot of wrinkles and dents and dings you may find that some of the makeup has settled into it a little bit. This makeup is pretty good about not doing that but if it has you just press it with your ring finger in especially along your hairline you want to check that area underneath your chin all around around your nose is big around your eyes is really huge, especially in here. If you've got a lot of wrinkles, like I do, you want to do that. Now, that's done, but you know what? I'm still seeing like age spots and stuff, so I want to take care of that. And you can use concealers. If you have the money, you may want to invest in IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. It's probably the best concealer in the world but it's very expensive so um, you just squeeze a little out of the tube just a little bead to, goes a long way um, you can put it here under your dark circles you want to pat that in with your ring finger you don't want to build too much up in this area because your crow's feet are powerful things and when they get makeup on them it doesn't look pretty I'm going to tap in some concealer into the age spot and around your nose. If you have rosacea issues. And I have a couple of lines down in this area I like to disguise a little bit. Okay, so we've got our foundation on and our concealer. If you don't have a lot of money to spend, NYX, NYX, it's called NYX because NYX is the goddess of nighttime, um, has a wonderful uh, concealer that's very liquidy and works really nicely 
in, especially in this area, in your uh, crow's feet area, and it takes out spots really well. Okay, I'm still seeing a couple little age spots up there in the corner. So I'll just tap that in and then just press it in with my ring finger. It's good to use your ring finger because that's the one with the least amount of pressure, so it won't pull and tear at your skin. Okay, all gone. An alternate method of putting makeup on your face. A lot of people like to use this thing called a beauty blender. It's a very dense, thick, egg-shaped sponge. And you need to run this under warm water, squeeze out the excess water, and then you could dot your face as usual, and then you're just rolling this around your face and it spreads the makeup on that way. Now, since there's a little bit of moisture in this, it thins out the makeup a little bit and makes it blend nicely into your skin. So it's a very nice alternative. Um, for some reason I like this and I bought this particular brush at Rite Aid Pharmacy and it's their own brand. ELF also has their own version although it's slightly smaller than this. ELF has a stippling brush also. And this is a wonderful way to put your makeup on. You still with me? Okay, so now we've got a base uh, face to work from. And another word about foundation, you really don't want foundation to give your skin a lot of color. You want it to blend in. If you notice, my skin all kind of blends in as one color. You don't want your face darker, um, although you think it looks nicer in pictures. If you've got a white neck and a white decollete, it doesn't look so good. So you want to keep an eye out on that. The next step we want to do is put some color and contour in our face. I'm going to contour first, and don't be afraid of the word contouring because it's a very simple process. It's usually about three shades darker than your skin is a contour powder. Now I have a couple of kinds here. One is from Mary Kay. Um, this, is a, this is a contour powder. It's very nice. It's matte. You always want to use matte on your cheeks when you are over 40 because uh, shininess makes wrinkles and crinkles exaggerate. It's not very pretty. And it's also reflective. You don't want to use any HD powders or HD anything uh, on your wedding day because the um, light from a flash can really make it look terrible. It, it radiates the light and it looks really funny. And I'm sure you've seen people with this uh, problem. Um, now what I do is this is a contour shade. I'm just going to make a fish face and I'm just going to make a little triangle here. Just a long thin triangle. Now you can blend that with your hand so it softens out. We don't want any lines. We just want the idea that there's a little darkness there. I'm going to use another kind of contour powder, and this is from e.l.f., and it's only, I think, $3, and this is very much like a very expensive contour powder called Laguna by a company called NARS. Okay, you need a light hand with this one. It's a little bit too much there. I'm just going to blend it up the same way, and I'm really just making a triangle. A third kind of contour powder. Uh, this is from Too Faced. This is their chocolate uh, contour powder. Just going to use a, a blush here. And I'm just going to color in the upper edges of my face. So basically what you're doing with contouring is you're creating a face shape by illusion. I'm just going to brush this, slowing it down so you can see, brush this just along the edge of my chin. And I'm just giving the optical illusion that it's receded back. So my face looks a little thinner. I've got a little bit of dimension to my face. And it looks nice. We're going to do a highlight shade next. And highlighters can come in different forms. Highlighters can be like Wet n Wild. This is called Reserve Your Cabana. Now it looks like a plain powder, but there's a slight shimmer to it. And what I do is I just use my finger and just go right up on the upper part of my cheek, the very upper part. You don't want to get near the crow's feet area, you just want to go on the top part of your cheek 
I'm going to do this side with this one. You also want to go right above your cupid's bow and right make a, a line down the center of the upper part of your nose. I'm going to go right inside here on the inside of each eye and just on top of each eyebrow. I'm going to do the other side. If you have a little money to spend on uh, an illuminizer or a highlighter, uh, It Cosmetics is a fabulous brand. They have probably the best you can get. Let me just get it open here. Now this is um, this is a highlight and it does much the same thing as our powder does except it's a cream highlight and it may have more staying power as far as not um, withering away as the day goes. You got a really big day ahead of you so you want to have a product that's going to last a while. Now we've got our highlight done our contour done. We're going to put a little color with blush. There are a couple of different types of blush you can use. I think Tarte is an excellent brush. It's a 24-hour clay, clay brush. You want to use some natural color, a matte shade. You want to stay matte when you are over 45. You don't want a lot of shimmer on your cheeks. So just on the apple, I like to do three fingers. And it's better to just put a little on and blend it up than add one big old blob of it and try to smear it out. Okay. Now if you want more of a, a peachy glowy tone, this is from Milani. It's much less expensive than the Tarte. This is called Luminoso. It's a very, very uh, universally attractive shade on many people. Some of my dark haired friends really like this one. Now whatever you do with blush, you may want to take it down to your decollete as well. So just put a little down in here. And of course if you're wearing a wedding dress, you want to have some kind of a towel or sheet or something right in this area. But usually right around in here just so you have a little bit of color and uh, it kind of illuminates with your face at the same rate. Now you want this to set up a little bit nice and there may be a little bit of shininess around your eyes so you're going to want to use a, a powder. The very last step you want to do is with your powder. Um, if you have the money, Laura Mercier has a beautiful powder. The finishing powder, this is the color ivory and you could put it on with a you can put it on with a puff. You just want to press it in to just the areas of your face that tend to get a little sweaty or, uh, or wet. Just the center of your face. You really don't need to use it on the outside. Um, you may want to use it right around your neck area if you're starting to sweat a little bit. Mary Kay has a really nice um, powder. This is Ivory 2. Uh, they have their own little, it's a special little case, but they have a great powder and if you don't want to spend too much money this is the Milani multi-purpose powder and it's really excellent as well comes with its own little powder puff and mirror and it's a beautiful all-purpose powder they call it a multitask powder so those are your three choices for powder and it's a great way to set your makeup, as they call it, setting the makeup. Fills in all the gaps, don't look like you have any pores, and if you can tell, I look like I have kind of nice skin. This is a large pencil, and it's from Milani, and this is, um, what we're going to do is we're going to see the topmost point of where our eyes are. Our eye socket is, it's right about here. We're going to draw a line from there right out. I know you think I'm crazy, right? Okay. Try it again. Now we're going to draw it in so it looks almost like kitty cat eyes. And what I'm 
doing is I'm just drawing it down so it hits the very edge of my eye right down here. Okay, and it looks terrible, and I know that. Working on this. You can use this is a blending brush, and this is something that you're going to use. You're going to stick your finger just like this, and you're just going to brush over and in, over and in, until you soften up that line. The reason my finger is here is because I don't want the eye makeup to go past that point. You need a little patience here. And there is no color on this brush. What we're creating is the optical illusion that your eyes are um, a little bigger than they normally would be. This is Kat Von D and this is a matte shade palette. These are all matte shades, there's no shimmer to them and that's what you want to use. I'm just going to use a little bit of a this color. I'm just going to go over what I just did. with that shade. Just going to use a lighter tone right in here. A new one called Nude Awakening. I'm going to use this color here. And you're going to see some And change in how my eyes look. Now the real magic happens with eyes when you do the liner and the mascara and then when you use the fake eyelashes which we'll be doing today also. Um, let's use this nice dark green brown and the last third of the eye we're just making a round little indentation. Adds a little bit of drama on an already dramatic eye. I don't use black. I think black is way too harsh. As you get older, you know, and a lot of us in the 70s plucked our eyebrows to death. We made thin little lines because it was very stylish. And after a while, our eyebrows got the idea that they shouldn't have to grow back if we're just going to take them out all the time. So we have thin eyebrows. Now there's the very inexpensive option here. They come to in a package, I think, for $5.99. These Maybelline Expert Eyes. And the big secret, always keep sharpeners with you, big secret to good eyebrow creation is to make sure your pencils are sharp so after every time you use it practically you're gonna have to sharpen it okay now I would just make little wispy strips just like we used to draw grass next to houses when we were little and this is a very light color I would suggest uh, if you have um, light brown to blonde eyebrows that you use the blonde and you can always build it up but okay and that's how that works it's pretty good and you could use like an, an empty colorless mascara brush or you can use a clear gel just brush them up so they look a little more natural you do have the money to spend it cosmetics makes a fabulous uh, brow pencil and um, it's, a, it's a universal color of taupe. You can go heavy with it. You can make a little bit of a little bit of an arch. Not much. You don't want to go crazy. You want to look as natural as possible. You don't want to look too contrived. 
And if you have too much eyebrows going on, um, they can really make you look like Cruella de Vil. So, okay. Now again, like with foundation, you want to go over and take out your eye makeup droppings. You can use this. Or your finger. Just have a double check again. See if anything's settled into creases or around the edges. And it looks good, so I'm going to continue on in our journey. For my eyeliner today, this is MAC and Teddy. I'm just going to start here just below where my eye, the center of my eye is. Just making a little bit of a line and on the top here. Again, now you don't have to use MAC Teddy. This was actually used on me at my wedding, so I thought I would use the same thing so you could see it. I'm really just going halfway. I'm leaving this whole third of my eye without eyeliner on it. So I'm really connecting this up up top here with where my eyeshadow ends and that is Teddy. I'll give you a little. Teddy is just a nice brown um, eye lining pencil and you can find many dupes for that in the store. I... Now the first law about your eyelashes is that you need to curl them. Even if you're going to use false eyelashes, you need to curl your lashes. Now you can use one of those metal devices or this, which is um, put out by Revlon or Ulta. It's really just like a little guillotine. Stick your eyelashes in it, close it down carefully, press. I hold it in, count to about eight or so, and release. Same thing on the other side. Now to hold the curl, I'm going to use a mascara. There is a brand new mascara out from L'Oreal called the Butterfly. And I'm enjoying it, so I'm probably going to use this one today. But the Butterfly has a unique shape to the, to the brush. It is a, it's kind of like a long V. It looks like this. Looks like this. So I'm just going to go as close to my lashes as possible and wiggle it up. You know, I forgot to do my nails before my wedding, and those are things you should do the night before. What you should not do the night before your wedding is anything new to your skin, like use a new cleanser or use a new, decide to do a skin peel or um, use a fake tan spray. Don't do anything the night before your wedding that you're not normally is part of your routine. You'll find a lot of skin products when you use them, your skin doesn't start reacting to them for a few days. So you don't want your skin to suddenly be peeling or red on your wedding day. This is the L'Oreal butterfly. It just came out. It's not even in all the stores yet. I just happened to find it. After mascara, you definitely have to look in the mirror. And I have this from e.l.f. It's called a makeup remover pen. And it's really just a, it is a felt tip that's infused with light oil. So I'm just going to have a look to see what the mascara did. Yeah, it looks like we have a little spillage here. And you see I'm just touching it. And it looks good on this side. And as soon as you use it, you, you blot it on a tissue and it's ready for your next use. And that way you only have to redo a little bit of your makeup. You don't have to redo the whole kit and caboodle. So that's definitely, you know, something you want to consider. So, starting to look good with the eyes. 
This is Maybelline's uh, The Rocket and this is a right around eight or nine dollars. has a very large wand. This is a great all-purpose mascara. gives you really big honking lashes and this is my choice number two. Now you have that moisturizer on your lips that we used and today I used the Sally Hansen Lip Balm. It's very moisturizing. Now that's had time to really set in and moisturize my lips. I'm going to use a lip pencil. This is from NYX and this is called Peekaboo Neutral. It's a really nice all-purpose lip pencil. It looks like the color of your natural lips. The color of your lip pencil should never be darker than the inside of your lip. I'm going to start up on the top here. Go straight across the cupid's bow. And straight across the cupid's bow. I'm following my natural lip line. I'm not going way above or below. But sometimes, you know, your lips are misshapen. So you can go a little bit over uh, to even out the look so it's more symmetrical. And it's nice in the last half actually color it in. And you know, lip pencils from Milani or uh, L'Oreal, you know, I really don't find a whole lot of difference in lip pencils. So the next ones were on sale, but I want to get one 50% off. And I think this is a great shade, Peekaboo Neutral. Now for lipsticks, these are fairly new and they're wonderful. Uh, this is um, Neutrogena. You actually can turn this and it makes it come up more. They're kind of self and I think this is fresh peach. And these lip pencils are very good for your skin. They're very moisturizing on their own. And I think it looks really nice. Now to keep your lipstick on for a long time, you want to blot it and reapply it. So I'm going to blot it and we apply it again. Okay. Now I think um, a lot of older women we lose uh, a lot of volume in our lips and it's kind of nice to give ourselves a little volume and a little bit of shine. Now this is NYX Lip Plumper Kim, okay. I guess Kim Basinger. She has big lips, I think. I don't know. Just on the center. Now with lip plumpers, if you haven't used one before, they heat up and they um, tingle a little bit. I'm going to be using these lashes and they go on exactly like this. We want to measure them to make sure that they're the exact length and you want to start them just on the inside of your inner corner and you want the end of the band to hit at the very end of your eye. You don't want it to stick out further. Now these are made for people with very wide eyes. So you want to measure it first. I'm going to need to move my mirror up for this one. I'm just going to lay this on top of my natural lashes and see how it looks. And it seems to be the right length. It's not too long. If you do need to cut it, you will cut it only from the outer corner of the eyelash. You will um, just cut in one little section at a time. You don't want to cut too much. To put a false eyelash on, 
I'm going to take some eyelash glue and I like to use the white or clear glue because it goes on white and it turns color when it is dry so it gives you kind of a warning so you're using it now the word glue and your eyeballs don't sound like the good mix to put together and I understand your concern but it's safe for your eyes and many of us have gotten eyelash, eyelash glue in our eyes before and we have survived to tell the tale but you have to just be careful okay I put a thin layer of glue on the lash you want to wait about 20-30 seconds for this to get tacky because then when it's tacky once you put it on it'll adhere a lot better and you won't be mushing it around and it won't slide all over the place I would suggest practicing your wedding makeup a week before your wedding and this way you'll know what's going to happen um, and this is a step you may want help with so I don't know if it's been 30 seconds yet with your tweezers and that'll help you a lot you can go in the center of your eye and you're going to place the lash down right on the center of your eye and press it down over the top of your natural lashes hold it in on the edges and you're just painting your lashes to kind of meld in with them so they look like they're part of the same thing Just painting over the top to make sure it blends nicely. I'm going to do our next one. You shouldn't be as fearful of it this time. I'm going to put it on the center here. And you're going to paint the glue onto the eyelashes okay, just going to paint that over the edge just a thin layer you don't need a big gloppy mess still with me? <laughs> okay so we're doing the same on the other side. We're just going to prop it down. And you may find one side goes on a lot easier than the other. Now this side went really easy. happens to stick to your lower lashes just use your tweezers to separate them and with your eyeliner you're just going to paint in between the lines make a little line here It just covers the band and makes it look like it's more part of your eye than a separate entity. Now it's feeling a little funny for you at first until you get used to it. But then pretty soon it'll just 
look natural. Now there are a lot of options for your hair uh, on your wedding day. You can have somebody come and do your hair at the wedding. You can have um, have your hair done the day before and then just brush it out. Um, I opted to wear a wig and my hair is very thin and I thought these are going to be pictures I'm going to treasure forever so I decided to wear a wig and I'm going to show you how I put that on. Now this wig is synthetic hair and it's longer than mine. It's a similar color but it's longer. Uh, on the inside of a wig you're going to see um, this, this is called the cap. That's on the back is usually marked by some kind of label. So I hold it from the back. Stick my hair upside down and I'm going to put this on and it looks crazy awful right now. So what I have to do is make sure it lines up to my hairline. I'm going to look for those two ear tabs and pull them down. You're going to pull this down all around so it's as flat on your head as it can be. You're going to be rolling it around a little bit until it feels natural and use a hairbrush. I will pin this with bobby pins and um, you can see what a huge difference it makes in your look and I was much more confident because of this. I had a good hair day. I didn't have to worry about it. Uh, I'll show you the pictures at the end here. So once we have the hair satisfactory to put the veil on and the comb has to mirror the back of your head. So just like with your real head, you just press it in there and space it evenly. Now, I donated my dress to charity so I don't have my dress. And this is a nice kind of an idea if you have age spots or um, unsightly hands. <laughs> I just took a very large piece of lace and sewed it. And then I added these are little hair rings. And you just stick your hand through there and put your middle finger through the ring. And you get this really nice gauntlet. So it's a really great way to um, hide your ugly hands. So now I guess all I need is my groom. And where would he be? I come with one empty, one full, and I Sounds pour, good. Your, pour yours. Okay. So, I guess at this point I need to introduce you to my groom. And my task, madame, <laughs> is to pour you a bit of the sparkling stuff. Uh-huh. Neither shaken, nor stilly, <laughs> to my bride, to my groom, and to all of you, and cheers. To, yes, cheers. <laughs> Without further ado, <laughs> I'd like to wish all of you getting married a very happy and successful marriage, like mine, so far. <laughs> we may make it through the day. <laughs> This will help Cheers. all of you. Cheers. You do make a beautiful bride. And you a handsome husband. I love you. I love you. As one great person once said, toodles. Toodles. <laughs> Have a beautiful day. So without further ado, I wish all of you a very happy and successful marriage and a wonderful wedding. <laughs> and what would my groom like to say? <laughs> uh, may you get porked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's got to be some outtakes, the best of <laughs>